digital camera world says that our eyes can only see at 10 frames per second. So why are we wasting our money on tech? I didn't even believe this argument when I first saw the title. I thought, okay, the author's trying to pull us in by proving an opposing point, right? And not so fast. Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated, means an awful lot to me, but most importantly, it really helps this channel grow. This is not a delayed April Fool's joke. Digital Camera World yesterday published a story with the headline, your eyes only see at 10 frames per second, so why are you wasting your money on tech? I had to read this article. It was baffling to me. How could anybody today, as a videographer or even a stills photographer, say that 10 frames per second is the most of what our eyes can see? It doesn't make any sense. And I get it. I'm not here to argue the underlying science or the data that is cited in, well, limited fashion here. What I'm going to argue against is his point is that why are we wasting money on tech gear? Well, let's take a look at three different examples. The first being, if you're a stills photographer, that you don't need more than 10 frames per second because, well, your eyes can't see the difference. Well, that's flawed because of the whole premise of the outcome at shooting at 10, 20, 30, or even 40 frames per second. And that's the ability to shoot, to capture a moment of a fast-moving subject, such as a bird in flight or something else. You'll be able to capture that subject, sharp, crisp, and clear. And to be able to do it at a frame rate of north of 20 frames per second all the way up to even 40 frames per second ensures that you're going to get that shot right the first time instead of looking later and going like, ah, oh, you know, I didn't quite get it right. So for stills photographers, for shooting wildlife or for shooting any other subject that's fast moving, well, there's a definite reason as you why you want, <laughs> try that again, there's a definite reason as to why you want to shoot north of 10 frames per second. It just makes sense. It's got nothing to do with whether your eye can see the details or not. It's the outcome. It's about getting that shot quicker. It's about getting that shot so that way you can spend less time in the field and you can spend more time making money, selling that shot, getting it out there. I, I just don't understand for that premise. But now let's take a look at a second premise and that's being able to shoot video. You see, back in the day, and I'm talking about way back in the day before I was born, we used to shoot movies at 16 frames per second. I'm not going to get into the reason behind that, but a lot of early silent movies, black and white movies, and that's why you see when they're played back today, everybody's moving very, very fast. They were shot at 16 frames per second. So if we couldn't see the difference north of 10 frames per second, then why are we at 24, 25, 30, or even 48 frames per second in a lot of movies and television shows? Obviously, our eyes can perceive the difference. It's nothing to do with the science and the data behind as to how the eye works, how the eye functions, what it sees. The end result is we see a difference whether you shoot at 16 frames per second, 24 frames per second, 30, or even 48 frames per second. There's a notable perception. There's a difference. And for a lot of filmmakers, it's a way of telling their story. And that's why some will shoot at 48 frames per second. Some will stay at 24 frames per second and others will experiment with other frame rates. But there's another reason similar to the first example I cited and that's shooting in slow motion. If you want to capture fast moving subjects, you want to shoot at frame rates of 120 frames per second, 240 or even higher. Well, are you wasting your money by buying a camera that can shoot at 4K 120? No, you're definitely not. And that's why to get 4K 120 or higher frame rates, you're generally spending a lot more money because the amount of processing that's required, the amount of tech inside that camera, well, it's higher grade. It costs more money. There's, there's fewer people chasing that, so it costs more to be able to produce it, to research and develop it, and then, of course, to purchase the camera. So going back to the quote, your eyes see at 10 frames per second, so you're wasting money on tech? No, we're not wasting our money on tech at all. As a photographer, there are certain scenarios where shooting north of 20 frames per second, well, even north of 10 frames per second, is worthwhile. And again, it's capturing fast-moving subjects, wildlife or uh, motorsports, um, motorcycles, car racing, all that sort of stuff. Then yes, shooting faster than 10 frames per second enables us to get the shot more frequently. So that way, we're the one getting the, the photo up to Sports Illustrator or whatever magazine prior or ahead of anybody else, and that makes a huge difference. And of course, when it comes to shooting videos, there's a different look and feel. And of course, being able to capture slow motion, to be able to shoot subjects, to be able to capture that moment of time, to be able to slow down time. Uh, if you're shooting a hummingbird, to be able to slow them down to 120, 240, or even higher, 480 frames per second, we see the world very differently. So no, we're definitely not wasting our money on tech. And I. 
I'm I'm confused by this article because I think it's trying to prove a point based on data, but it's forgetting its audience. I mean, this is digital camera world after all. It's not ZNet, it's not CNET, where it's talking about wider consumer tech. It's talking about cameras. And at one point they talked about EVFs as well, saying that you can't see the perceptual difference at shooting at 120 frames per second. But you ask anybody who's shot with a mirrorless camera, and for whatever reason, for forgetting the architecture of the camera, what we see is when you shoot at slower frame rates, there's a noticeable blur or a flicker, and we need those faster frame rates so that when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're actually seeing reality. You're seeing things the way they are, like you would with an optical viewfinder. And those slower frame rates, they just don't deliver. I'd like to see Canon, Sony, Nikon, or anybody else try to release a, um, <laughs> an EVF with a frame rate of 10 frames per second, arguing, hey, your eyes just can't see the perceptual difference of shooting past 10 frames per second. You know what would happen with that camera. You know what would happen on this channel. I just look at them and saying, are you crazy? Are you nuts? Are you insane? So I don't know where this idea came for this article on the Easter weekend. Maybe there was too much turkey being consumed, or maybe there's too much something else being consumed. But yeah, I, I've read through the story several times, and I think the argument is rather, well, loose at very best. I mean, obviously, we can see perceptual differences, and for forgetting the underlying science. And it's always important to understand the data and the science behind things. I strongly believe in that. But when your argument at a conceptual level or contextual level doesn't make any sense and we can see the definite outcomes, then maybe there needs to be some more alignment to the outcomes because otherwise the argument just falls flat. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news, rumors, and um, yeah, I, I'm still baffled by this topic. But what I'm trying to get to, if you want to stay up to date on the latest content that I produce, go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. And for all those minor news and rumors, then go ahead and subscribe to me on Twitter using this link right here because all those videos, all those other stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well, I tweet those out. And this was almost going to get tweeted out. I was getting ready to tweet this out and I thought, you know what? This is just absolutely insane. I don't care how many views this gets and I'm not expecting it to get too many, but I just thought, this is just doesn't make any sense. And it's Easter Monday, I have the day off, my son has a day off, and while my wife is upstairs making breakfast, I thought I'd come down here and shoot this video, share it with you, and get your thoughts on this. What do you think? Is this absolutely insane? Um, and I know some of you are going to read the article in depth saying, yes, but what they're trying to prove is this point. But they failed, because again, the premise, well, look at it, your eyes can only see 10 frames per second, so why are you wasting money on tech? The argument is what I'm arguing against, is that their argument is flawed. It doesn't go, it, it just completely fails when you look at the results. And whether you're a photographer or videographer, um, yeah, we can, we can see the perceptual differences. We can feel them. I, 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 I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised. But anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week, and we'll see you again soon.